As a child, I would come home from school crying, begging my parents to let me go back home. Where exactly did I think home was? Wasn't I already there? I'd only ever lived in Australia. Growing up, Australia didn't feel like home because either the kids at school told me it wasn't or their parents did. But my experiences are not unique. There are many Australians whose neighbours don't return their greetings and whose classmates won't watch World Cup matches with them. I started asking the questions that eventually led me to this thesis when I was not invited to my Armenian classmate's birthday party. It was then that my father had to tell me about the World War I conflict between the Ottoman Armenians and the Ottoman Turks. He explained that the two sides used the opposing labels of genocide and civil war to describe the events, which has impeded their ability to reconcile ever since. Now, all of this was far too much for a 10-year-old to take in, so it was mentally shelved until the labelling debate made its way to Australian parliamentary and media discussions. It was uh, in 1997, the New South Wales Parliament passed a motion recognising the event as an act of genocide, and in 2009, the South Australian Parliament followed. My PhD thesis is about understanding how international debates, when recognised in Australia and when covered by the media, are able to create conflict between ethnic migrant communities in Australia. More simply, I want to know how and why international debates make their way to Australia and what their presence means for ethnic migrant communities and the concept of multiculturalism. So, how will I achieve this? I have analysed the content of Hansard transcripts, national print media and local ethnic print media to understand what led to the motions and how they affected the Armenian and Turkish communities living in Australia. So what have I found so far? It turns out, for Australian Armenians, ethnic identity is formed by a collective memory of the World War I conflict. However, for Australian Turks, it's actually formed by what followed World War I, the formation of the Turkish Republic. So, the Armenian media in Australia publishes an average of one article each day in English using the genocide label. The Turkish media only publishes one article a week in response, and it's in Turkish. So it's the Armenian coverage that filters into the mainstream media, 10% to be precise. The presence of this debate in Australia has resulted in protests, vandalism, and even terrorism. So hopefully, this research will take a step towards putting all of that behind us. Thank you.